problem with being able to assess the dangers of AI is that we don't really have a consensus as to what exactly consciousness is. I mean, we can't even predict which jobs are going to go away first because art was the last job that many had predicted AI would overtake, but somehow it became the first. Could a similar fallacy be at play with consciousness that we keep thinking that it's going to be the last obstacle for AI, but somehow it ends up slipping under our radar? Now, coming from a psychology background, I can say that for decades, scientists have underestimated animal intelligence and continue to do so. Now, what is wrong with their assumptions that allows this to happen? And could they be making similar fallacies in their assessment of how intelligence is propagated in other systems? This example might seem controversial to some, but one of the most respected mycologists, aka fungi expert, Paul Stamets, believes that honey mushrooms might have a form of rudimentary intelligence. I kid you not. Though still not well understood, the honey fungi is the largest and oldest living organism in the world. You see, what appears to be a single mushroom in the surface is actually a collection of mushrooms attached to a much larger organism beneath the earth that is hundreds of football fields in total area, and in one case, over 1,600 football fields. It's like the idea of fungal intelligence. The idea that you could somehow or another understand the language that these things, we don't, even, we don't even understand dolphin language, right? They designed basically a nutrient like maize replicating Tokyo in the Japanese subway system. They started it with Tokyo and they put it oats, which is a nutritional source. They inoculated what is on this basically kind of agar map um, with all the major cities, the nodes around Tokyo. And then they let the slime mold then grow. And first it grew out randomly, exploratorily, you know, just like you would do, do if you're a hunter or something, you're hunting on the landscape looking for things. And then after about 28 hours, it reorganized itself in the most efficient way possible and reorganized the Japanese subway system in a more efficient manner than it's designed today. Thus, they, they said, not me, not Paul Stamets, this is a demonstration of cellular intelligence. Whoa. So my point is, if it's true that this fungi is able to utilize a basic form of intelligence, then what constitutes consciousness may not be the physical medium to which information is disseminated, rather the neuron-like patterns, regardless of the medium. I mean, let's think about it. Isn't that how evolution started? With basically meaningless patterns cultivating themselves in a self-replicating process? Now, a fact that I rarely hear discussed is the idea that at one point Earth was just molten lava and in time it became just rocks and water. But if you really think about it, the only difference between rocks and water and humanity is really just time. Now, isn't that weird to ponder about? It makes you wonder if such processes necessitate some intelligence embedded in how the laws of physics interact, a more primordial form of DNA that controls the actual laws of physics and the way that they dance with one another in such a manner as to sprout ever more complicated self-sustaining systems. Could this be the reason why the mega structures of the universe look like our brain? Now, to close off this episode, I would like to showcase a genius AI researcher who looks like the hypothetical child of Dr. Oakham from Independence Day and John Lennon. Ben Gortzo is an interesting man, not only because of his absolute genius and the fact that he is the lead scientist for Handsome Robotics, the company responsible for Sophia, but it's also because of his philosophy on consciousness. His ideas seem to be near opposite to what most materialistic AI researchers believe. I've talked about consciousness and subjective experience with AI programmers and AI scientists, most of them are fairly materialist in their outlook. That's one respected philosophy of consciousness. It, it isn't mine. So when I'm